hi everyone hope you are doing well welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we will talk about software engineering models for each model we will talk about uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, its use and we will see some examples of method uh, of methods that uh, use those uh, models so uh, let's get started so uh, for models that will be covered uh, during this presentation we find the linear uh, or sequential model, the iterative model, the incremental model, and the evolutionary model. So let's start with the linear model. So this kind of model is widely used for non-complex system with CLIA user requirements. Mainly it encompasses five activities and the output of the previous phase is the input to the next phase. So we cannot start any phase until the previous one concludes. For work completion, so in this kind of model, uh, the work is performed within one monolithic cycle and it starts, uh, which starts from requirement analysis to testing, to testing and maintaining the solution. For the disadvantages of this model, uh, so the user have to wait the whole of cycle to have the release. Another disadvantages, disadvantage of uh, the linear model is the high amount of risk and uncertainty. And uh, this disadvantage is due to two factors. The first uh, trivial uh, error in any previous phase can cause a huge problem for subsequent phases as each phase depends on the prior phase. And the second um, factor is uh, due to the, its resistance to change and to the need for correction and rework. So we have a high risk and an, an uncertainty to satisfy our customer. So as example of uh, linear methods uh, using the, the sequential model, we find the waterfall model this uh, model uh, includes five uh, phases from the requirements until the maintenance so we have to go step by step uh, in order to generate the final solution uh, each phase of this process uh, perform a specific activity during uh, the process another example of uh, linear methods is uh, the v model so the v model is an extension of the waterfall model uh, and, is, and is based on the association of test phases uh, to the corresponding development phases so for each uh, for each uh, development phase we have a, a test phase and for the work per, per for, for the work per completion uh, we have to go from left to right and as seen here, uh, at the implementation phase, uh, the process steps are bent upwards uh, to form the type we call uh, V shape. Now for the, iterate, it, now for the, for the iterative model, this uh, model is uh, used for complex system with unclear requirements. Uh, one iteration uh, in this model uh, may include one or more activities. Uh, for work completion, so we start with an initial subset of the pro problem and iteratively we enhance existing versions until a full system is implemented. And uh, for the change, uh, this kind of model is uh, change tolerant. So we can uh, add new modification and the new functional capabilities at each iteration. For the disadvantages of this model, so this model is not efficient for small projects uh, and the, due to the unclear requirements and to the tolerance to changes, so it requires, it requires uh, more resources and uh, more management attention. Uh, and then uh, we will have uh, we will have a costly system architecture or design issues. As example of iterative methods, we we find the, the iterative waterfall model. So this model is an enhancement of the classic waterfall model. The author added to this model feedback paths, 
those red uh, dotted uh, lines. Uh, so those uh, feedback paths uh, help to help the programmer to uh, to uh, to detect to identi identify errors and to correct those uh, errors. So, for example, if uh, we are at the verification phase and we identify a design error, so we have to come back to this phase, uh, do necessary change, and then th those changes will be reflected in the implementation phase. Another example of iterative met methods is the spiral model. So, in this kind of model, the iteration goes through uh, four phases. Uh, so the first phase is uh, the phase of uh, objectives uh, determinations. The second phase is uh, the phase of identification and resolving risks. The third phase is about development and testing. And the, the fourth phase is for planning the next iteration. So uh, at the end of each uh, iteration, we have a generated prototype. and. Uh, uh, this prototype evolves uh, through uh, iteration in order to generate the final release. Now for incremental models, so this kind of model, uh, in this kind of model, uh, the project is split in uh, chunks or increments. We start uh, always with uh, the most priority increment. And uh, as a result of each increment implementation, uh, a release is uh, delivered. Uh, those release, those delivered releases uh, compose the final uh, added, added functions to the previous release and compose the final uh, resulted release. Uh, in most cases, this kind of, uh, of model uh, is uh, is used with the iterative uh, model. So the project, the whole project, is split into increments, and to perform or to execute, uh, to implement each uh, increment, we have to use uh, one iteration. Now for the disadvantages of this model. So uh, this kind of model needs a clear and complete definition of the whole system. Uh, at the beginning of the, life of the life cycle. It requires good planning and designing, and uh, we may have some problem with uh, the system architecture because uh, all the requirements are not uh, collected at the beginning of the entire software cycle. As example of incremental methods, so we have uh, Prince2 uh, method. So Prince2 is an incremental project management uh, method. It, uh, include, uh, it includes a staged uh, incremental uh, delivery for smaller part of the product. And uh, all the activities of, the of a given uh, stage uh, are performed once. And uh, the final uh, product is generated by composing uh, uh, the, the, the previous uh, uh, deliverable or increments. Another example of uh, incremental methods is the Agile method. So uh, in, this, uh, in this kind of uh, method, uh, we find uh, sprints. So sprints represent uh, the iteration. And at the end of each iteration, we find uh, uh, an outcome. Uh, the final outcome or the final release is a cumulative outcome uh, of the previous uh, outcomes. Another example of incremental methods is the rational unified process uh, method. So this kind of method is incremental and iterative. So uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have four phases, the inception, the elaboration, the construction, and the transi transition phase. phase. And the, an iteration goes through uh, many activities, all the activities of this process, from business modeling until deployment. And uh, at the end of each iteration, we have a, a release. This release represents a subset of the final uh, release. Uh, as seen here, uh, each phase of the process uh, may include 
one or two or more uh, than two uh, iterations. And finally, the evolutionary model. So for this model, uh, uh, this kind of model is basically iterative. So the final product is built in successive iterations. Uh, the requirements are implemented by category contrary to incremental model, which, uh, uh, which uh, find the uh, priority uh, um, implementation of increments. And contrary to iterative model, we don't necessarily have a release at the end of each iteration. This kind of model uh, is very useful uh, when uh, we have new technology that are not well understood by team members. For the disadvantages of this model, so it's not suitable for suitable for small project. It's time consuming and costly model. Uh, it requires uh, a constant management. Uh, we can find difficulty to divide the problem into several versions, and we have uh, uh, we have a high risk uh, with this kind of uh, model. So the risks may not be completely determined even at the final stage of the project. As example of, evol of evolution, as example of evolutionary model, so uh, we have the incremental iterative model. So here, um, increments are evolved uh, through uh, iteration to compose the final uh, release. Another example is the spiral model. So this kind of model is also uh, uh, evolutionary. So the prototypes here evolve uh, through iteration to generate the final release. And another example of evolutionary model is the prototyping model. So we have to go to evolve through an iterative cycle and generate many prototypes uh, until the satisfaction of uh, the customer. Once the customer is satisfied, so we go uh, uh, implement the, the, the real uh, release. So that's it for uh, this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't hesitate to like my video. Don't hesitate to subscribe to my question and to ask me or suggest me anything in comments. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video. Thank you.